Welcome back everybody, this is the Johnny Mare, and I am continuing with Final Fantasy 1 Dawn of Souls, the PSP version. So my last episode, we actually did the Ice Cavern and we picked up an item that allowed us to access this game airship. Which means now a lot of the world is open to us. And as you can see, my characters are around level 29. And we've actually reached a very special point in this game where we are able to class change or upgrade our classes for our different characters, thus making them a little bit stronger. So what you want to do is head north from the desert where you get the airship. And eventually, you're going to come across a massive land area that has a huge desert, which is this area. And if you head to the west of that desert and also to the south a little bit, we're going to follow the coastline here a little bit. Then eventually, if I can find it, you're going to find a peninsula that actually has a citadel on it, which is right there. And that is the Citadel of Trials that we need to get to. And the only place you can park to get there is right here, which means we have to walk all the way around the coastline to get down there to the Citadel of Trials. And uh, you're going to have to basically go through a series of puzzles. They're not super hard. After all, this game was made back in the late 80s. I guess that doesn't really matter too much. I mean, a lot of NES games were actually pretty hard. But uh, once you are able to successfully do that, and uh, you are going to have to fight enemies as well, you're going to get an item that once you obtain it, you can actually cash in for some class changes. So we're going to fight some new enemies. We have progressed in the world map so now we're gonna access you know some different areas that we can actually access and uh, I actually didn't sleep at an inn off camera that was interesting so I have to be very careful about my characters HP and MP now not all the enemies are new enemies you are gonna fight some reoccurring ones that we fought before especially if you happen to go into a water area because a lot of the water enemies are basically the same. Now, you don't want to go to the desert now. We will be going there a little bit later. But uh, I always forget we're supposed to head south here or to the west. I think it might actually be to the west. But we do have some new enemies here. The Were Tiger and the Sabretooth. Sabretooth's not exactly Sabretooth from X-Men, one of my uh, favorite characters, besides Wolverine, of course. But the uh, Were Tigers are annoying because basically they can poison you. Hey, we got some levels. You getting all those stat increases? So now we're at level 30. Alright, and yeah, this was not the right way. We wanted to go west. So we'll head back to the north, and I'm still poisoned. Because I got poisoned in that last battle. Let's heal that quickly. And we'll continue onward. Luckily this is not poison marsh or anything, so we're not taking damage while walking over that stuff. This game does like to throw hazards like that at you, but not here. So we're at the citadel. So I saved quickly and now we'll head on in. So first off you want to head north and talk to this old man. So we have the crown that we got when we beat Atmos, was that his name, way back when? Evil elf. They're gonna test our courage by making us head through here. Don't worry, we're the light warriors, we can handle it. I'm gonna head to the north and west, and there's a little throne you can sit on here. And now there's a series of teleporters. Now the first couple are pretty easy. There's only one that's activated in each of the rooms. But uh, after this, there's gonna be multiples. You have to pick the correct one. And I will show you which of them is the correct one to take. And I'll also show you if we have any new enemies, which we do. The Rakshasha? No. Rakshasa? Whatever. That thing. A palette swap of a were-tiger. 
Oh, there's some awesome items in here. Not because they're really that great to equip or anything, but, uh, you know, basically they give you some special abilities that, ooh, a Mummy King, that we're gonna be using for much of the rest of the game, at least one of them. One of them, it's gonna outlive its usefulness, but uh, the other one is pretty much gonna be around for the rest of the game, so we'll be using it. Now, mummies do pack a punch, but uh, they are pretty weak. So you can take them out with a fire spell or, you know, your Dia spell. And we're getting massive amounts of Jill, which is very good. Head to the south here. Because once we get our class change, we're actually going to be able to equip brand new equipment. Uh-oh, Medusas. These things are nasty. So they can, uh, as you might expect, put you into stone status. With their stupid gaze ability. Jester. Oh no. Oh crap. Please don't kill me. Luckily we do have the uh, Stona ability, which uh, should get rid of Petrify. Ow. There we go. Question is whether or not we'll be able to cast it again on me before we kill off these Medusas. Nope. Well, that's unfortunate. You do not get experience if you're in the Petrify status, so now my character is going to be behind everyone else by a little bit of experience. Yeah, by a little over a thousand. Oh well. Nothing to do for it. Alright, so for this one we want to take this teleporter. And uh, this is the area where you can get the first of the special items in this area. So head down in here and there is a enemy pressure plate so we're going to save. Now let's take them on. They're not too tough. They look intimidating. Kind of look like they scored a goal. And they're doing a victory celebration by sliding on their knees. Mia Ham like The clay golems go down pretty fast. See you later, boys. And we get the gauntlets. Now, we can't actually equip these. They are a arm equipment. But uh, basically what they are good for is if you use it as an item in battle, they will cast Thundara. So it gives you a cheap way to cast damage in a battle without having to actually use MP. So that's pretty nice. And it actually will strike, you know, every enemy in the group, so... It's good for massive mobs of enemies that uh, aren't really that strong. A Minotaur Zombie. Well, let's show it off. Now, I think it's still technically based on your intelligence stat or whatever determines magic damage in this game. So, if I do cast it with someone like my thief or, you know, my warrior, it's not going to do as much as my red mage or even my white mage, maybe. But anyone can use it as long as it's in your inventory. If you have it equipped, then it's limited to that character that actually has it equipped. And if you're playing the NES version, I'm going to take this teleporter, it is limited to the inventory of the character that you actually put it on, because obviously you don't share an inventory in that version. Oh man, Dragon Zombie. This is a uh, little sneak peek of what we're going to have to fight to get the special item that we're ultimately here for. The token of courage that's in this area. We'll have to take on two of those. This is a pressure plate. Taking on some nightmares. Palette swaps of the... Uh, oh, what were they called way back when? Crazy horses or something like that? They're not too tough. Of course, at this point, not much is too tough since I'm at level 30. 
That's a little over leveled. You don't have to be this high in level. But here is the important item, and that is the healing staff. So when you use the healing staff in battle, as you might expect, it casts heal. And anyone can use it. So obviously you can even use it with characters that don't know the heal spell. So basically what you can do is just top off your HP during random encounters. And essentially, you'll keep yourself from having to cast a lot of MP. Now this is especially helpful. Oh crap, mind flares. Uh, mind flares are always bad news. So in this game, yeah. They can instantly kill you with their regular attacks. And then they also have a Mind Blast special ability. Do not hit. Whew. Which uh, will wreak havoc on your party. So let's try to kill these guys as quickly as possible. See if we can revive Jester up there. Nope. Well. Now Jester has fallen behind. So looks like Nack and Avok are heading out in uh, the lead when it comes to experience. Ah, we'll catch up eventually. Once the game goes on, you'll be getting so much experience that, you know, being a thousand off isn't going to matter. At least not too much. So we have a lot of chests over here. Steel gloves, useless, ice brand, that's helpful. And the ruby armlet, that is really helpful. That's the next level of the armlet that your uh, white mage can actually wear. So that'll boost Avok's defense significantly. Steel gloves aren't helpful. The ice brand is, as you can see. So we'll throw that on Johnny. And uh, we are going to put the ruby armlet on Avok because we need Avok to have some survivability since he's our healer. And then a few more chests down here, and then we'll have to take on the boss, mini boss, whatever, even though it's a regular encounter in this area. Now that open chest was the gauntlets, so you can actually get them there too. And over here is the chest with our token of courage, of course, the rat's tail, because we all know that the tail of a rat shows your courage and your power. Now we can teleport back by jumping on this throne, but we have to fight the dragon zombies. Now alternatively, you can just walk backwards and use the teleporters to get out of here, but it is much easier to do it this way. So we'll heal and uh, make short work of these dragon zombies. I said make short work of them. Thank you. Okay, so let's teleport. And now we're gonna head out. And uh, basically what I'm gonna do is save and I'm gonna make the uh, long trek back to my airship because we have to head to the west and find some islands so we can cash in the rat's tail. So I will see you guys over by the airship. All right, so here we are. Let's jump in our airship and head to the west and to the south, and we'll find some islands right here. Now again, you can only park on plains areas, so we'll park up here. In each of these little islands, there are a cluster of them, are called dragon caves. Some of them have items in them, some of them have just dragons that you can talk to. And one of the entrances in particular is the one we want, and that's the one that will take us to the Dragon King so we can get our class change. Now you do want to be careful in this area because one of the entrances will take you to one of the special dungeons. The Hellfire Chasm or something like that. And if you do enter that, you can't get out until you finish it, so unless you have the teleport spell. Which, until you get the class change, you can't have, so be very careful that you don't get stuck. But uh, the Dragon King is actually on this island right here. Take the long trek to the south, and then it will take us into his chamber. And any guesses who the Dragon King is? Come on, you should all know. The coolest Esper in any Final Fantasy game. That's right. Bahamut. 
or Bahamut, or Bahamut, or however you want to pronounce it. Looks pretty awesome. Well, we are the Light Warriors. We've done a lot so far. Yes, this rat tail. Please take it from us, it's disgusting. Now he's just showing off with his wings there. And now we get the cool class change, so your characters are actually gonna look different. Nice. Now this game is kind of obsessed with the color red. So you're gonna see a lot of red in your different characters. In the previous games, they weren't. And so like the ninja was actually green, I think, in the Game Boy version. We will do so. But the class change is very important. You're gonna get different stat growth, usually a little bit better. You're gonna be able to equip new items, especially your ninja can now equip lots of new stuff. It really helps the thief out. And in the case of your knight and your now ninja, they can actually equip magic now too. So a knight can equip up to level three white magic and a ninja can equip up to level four black magic, which is very useful because now Nakuso can have the temper spell and also the haste spell, which means we can temper and haste our characters much quicker. So that will make boss battles a lot easier to do in the future. And as you can see, it also opens up a lot of new spells for your wizards. So our red wizard can now equip brand new magic, both white and black magic. And so can the white wizard. Avok can now equip new spells that he couldn't equip before. So it is very helpful to do this. I recommend doing it as soon as possible. And like I said, you can actually do this before you get the airship. There's a little way up near the Citadel of Trials that you can access that little lake we went through. And you can use the ship and canoe to actually get into it to get to the Citadel. So, you know, it's up to you when you want to do it. I usually just wait until this point in the game to actually do it. So I'm gonna have to do a lot of backtracking, get brand new items, brand new magic for all my characters, and I'm gonna do that off screen. And then next time in my next episode, we're gonna start heading towards the next shrine to take on our next elemental fiend. And uh, I will also show off the rest of the dragon islands here so you can see some other items you can pick up. So as always viewers, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I will see you all next time when we continue onward with the Warriors of Light. So long. <laughs>